Hey everybody, Tyrant here from the first VFW. Gonna show you my project WeatherGen. Uh, get you started. Uh, so first things first, uh, this is a web application. You don't need to install any software. You simply go to uh, the URL, which is candera.github.io/weathergen. Uh, you can see that right there. Uh, when you load that, and I should mention that currently, as I'm recording this, this only works in Chrome and Firefox. It might work in other browsers, but they're not really supported at the moment. That's something I hope to change in the future, but for the moment, only Chrome and Firefox. So if you're using Chrome and Firefox, you should see this screen come up after a moment. Um, so there's a lot of controls here. There's a lot of things going on, and uh, some of it might be a, a little confusing to you at first, but the good news is you really don't need to control a lot of this. So first thing I'm going to do is make everything a little bit um, bigger so it's easier to see on the on the uh, recording here. So let me go ahead and do this. So first thing I want to show you is that uh, you can use these buttons here to make the map area uh, smaller. So I'm going to do that to bring the whole thing down to where you can see it. Okay. So what you're looking at here is obviously on the left um, is a map showing what looks like, hopefully, some weather. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. And then on the right, you've got some controls. I'm going to make this map just a little bit bigger there. Um, so really, like I said, there's a lot of controls going on here. Probably the only thing you really want to touch right now are going to be the uh, time controls and um, uh, maybe the random seed. So uh, if you have questions about other things, first of all, there's a link uh, up here in the top, and this will take you to the um, BMS forum page where WeatherGen is... Uh, announced and where I'll be watching to answer questions that you might have. So do go ahead and click that link uh, right there in the title bar. Uh, if you have questions and you can ask them there, that's probably the best way to get my attention. Um, but I also have put in here some attempt at uh, helpful tool tips. If you click the little blue question, uh, the little blue circle with the question mark in it, you can see it'll tell you about that field. So here we see the map. Um, you know, we've got uh, maps. That's what you're seeing behind the weather there. Uh, you can put Balkans, Israel, or if you like, nothing if you want that'll remove the background image. I'm going to leave it in Korea for now. Um, <clears throat> next thing you're going to notice is that you have a couple options for display. You can show the weather type, and that's actually what we're looking at right now. And briefly to explain, what we're seeing here is, so the weather in Falcon uh, has a, a fairly straightforward model. Um, the world is divided up into a grid of uh, squares. Um, each of those squares has a cloud cover type, uh, and that can be sunny, fair, poor, or inclement. And what you're seeing here when the display is set to weather type is uh, what weather type there is in each of the squares in the virtual world. Uh, so the, the clear areas represent sunny weather, the green areas represent fair, the yellow areas represent poor and the red areas that represent inclement weather. Um, so uh, just to be aware, this is not actually like a radar map. Sometimes people look at this and go, oh, the green it means it's raining. No, you'll really only see precipitation in Falcon in the red areas. But I chose to make it uh, these colors because this is pretty consistent with what um, Weather Commander does. And that's such an awesome program. I didn't really want to deviate too much from that. You can kind of see over here, too, that the colors are indicated in the uh, weather type configuration controls over here that we're not going to go into in this um, in this screencast. Um, the other thing I want to point out is the overlay here. Uh, right now we're looking at the wind overlay. You can also overlay pressure. So that's numeric information about the pressure. Uh, very hard to see unless you make it bigger. Um, not That's OK, because uh, you're probably not going to want to look at that too often. Um, I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, mainly, you're going to want to leave it on wind. And in this case, what we're seeing is, let me go ahead and bump this up a bit so you can see a little bit better here, is we're seeing these wind vectors. And so you see a line. It has a tail. Uh, actually, it has potentially more than one tail. The line indicates the direction the wind is moving. So here we see the wind is originating in roughly the northeast and heading towards, the, uh, sorry, the northwest and heading towards the southeast. Uh, over here in the stormy area, the wind changes directions more often. And I don't know if you can see those little tails. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you so you can see those a little bit better. Uh, you can see these tails. Uh, some of the tails are short and some are long. Every long tail indicates 10 knots of wind speed, and every short tail indicates 5 knots of wind speed. So here we're seeing a wind speed that is roughly 15 knots, and then here we're seeing a wind speed that is roughly 20 knots. So this is probably the most common view you use, is the one that shows both uh, uh, the weather type and the wind speed and direction. OK, so make that smaller so we can see everything again. Um, so what are the other things you might want to change in here? Well, the point of WeatherGen is to create uh, 
Uh, I've been using the term convincing weather uh, as opposed to realistic weather. Uh, it's really not a simulation of real world weather. Uh, but the idea is to get something that looks a lot like uh, what you might expect weather to look like. Um, and you have a fair amount of control over how it works. I'll go over some of that. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to say, okay, I want some weather, and I'd ultimately like to save um, a Falcon weather file, an FMAP file, that will persist the information that's in here about uh, wind speed and direction, temperature, pressure, and cloud cover into a file that you can then incorporate uh, into Falcon. Um, for use in your uh, TEs or campaigns or whatever. So um, you can do that just by bringing it up here and probably the simplest thing to do would uh, just be to change the seed. The seed is essentially an identifier for a weather system. So I could change this say from 1, 2, 3, 4 which is the default to say 1, 2, 3 and the weather, nothing will change until you either you know move to a new uh, place in the weather or if you're in here you can also hit enter. And you'll notice that every time I enter a new number, I get a different weather system over here. Um, and one of the goals of uh, WeatherGen is that you can always get back to the same weather by having the same settings. So I'm like, oh, those were interesting, but I want to go back to the one I started with. Um, you go back to one, two, three, four, you'll get the same weather system. So one thing that you could do to, to use this in a straightforward way is to simply say, you know, go in here. You can put any number you want. It can be a decimal like 10.1. Uh, that'll give you a very different uh, weather system than say 10.2. Uh, you can just uh, change this, sorry, uh, I guess that didn't give a different weather, weather system, but if you pick different enough numbers, um, you'll get uh, different weather. And you can pick one, you're like, oh, this is good, you know, mostly sunny, some fair, uh, winds largely, you know, pretty light. Um, I like that one. And then you can just go down here to the load save section and say, save current as single F map. When you do that, it's going to uh, give you a, a, a save dialog. You're going to hit save, and that is an FMAP file that you can then go into Falcon and load, and you will have this weather in your TE or campaign. And I'm going to refer you to the BMS manual, which is in the docs, uh, for information about how to incorporate the weather into um, uh, Falcon. But it's basically as simple as going into the weather uh, section when you're editing a TE or a campaign, and um, and just saying use the map model. Um, pretty straightforward. All right, so you might do that. You might just say, I'm going to, I like this. But you might want something that evolves, uh, you know, over time. You might want to say, well, when I took off, the weather was sunny, but when I came back to uh, base, the weather was, in fact, uh, a lot worse. And so, uh, you know, you'd like the weather to sort of evolve over time. So that's here we're going to see in the time location controls area. You can step forward and backward through time. So I'm going to go ahead and click step forward here, and you're going to see the weather will advance. Um, you may have, if you were looking closely, noticed that when I click save, um, if you notice, the weather also advanced. And the reason for that is that when you save one of these files with the save button, uh, the file name that it picks is named based according to the time. So here you can see the time, current time in this weather map a moment ago was one hour, or sorry, day one, 11 hours, zero minutes. So 1100 at, on day one of the Falcon time. Um, and so it named the file as 11100. That's actually the naming convention that, uh, uh, that uh, Falcon uses. If you save a series of FMAP files, in the weather maps updates folder in the, um, the campaign save directory, it will actually update them. The game engine will update them. Sim engine will update them as time advances. Um, so you could save one of these every you know 20 minutes or so, and every 20 minutes in the sim, the weather will advance uh, according to the, uh, th the uh, settings that you've picked here in the, in WeatherGen. Um, so uh, because the weather advances when you click save current as single F map. When I click it here, it's going to save weather for one hour or day one, hour 12, minute zero, and advance to uh, day one, hour 13, minute zero. So I can save that one, click save again, and get the save file for one hour 13, or day one, th hour 13, and so forth and so on. And you can save as many of those FMAP files as you want to to get, you know, three, four, five, ten, fifteen days worth of weather that you can then copy into the Weather Maps Updates folder, go into the weather settings in Falcon, and check the uh, 
uh, maps auto update and the weather will advance in the sim as sim time advances. Um, should point out too you have the step interval here that's uh, minutes that the time will advance. So right now I have it set to 60 so that's one hour. I could make that if I wanted to 15 um, and then if I uh, step forward you'll notice that the time advances by only 15 minutes at a time. And the same would be true for saving as a, a single F map. Now this does mean that as it stands right now, if you wanted to do like five days of weather with you know five minutes resolution, you'd be clicking this uh, save current as single F map button a lot. Um, that's something that I might address in a future release. Because this is a browser app, there are limitations on what you can do around saving and uh, uh, this is the best I could do for now. Um, I've got some ideas on how to work on that, but as this is the initial release, um, I think it, it works pretty well. And I've actually done this. It's not too bad to just click save a bunch of times, and you can easily get um, a day or two of weather in a fairly short number of clicks. Okay, so a um, couple of the things I want to mention here as far as time. Um, you have two buttons here, jump to and set to. So uh, that is explained here in the help. Um, you can read it there, but um, just briefly, since I think that's one of the less intuitively obvious pieces of the interface, uh, the idea here is that okay, you know, you're kind of you've got some weather set up, and you're going to click your way along, and you're like, oh, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, I like this. You know, there's a cell right here, and that's the target area, and I'd like to be able to do bad weather. Um, so, but the problem you run into is like, well, the the time in my campaign is you know, uh, day two, hour. 17 and right now this weather is set at day 1 hour 15 so what you can do is you can go in here and say day 2 hour 17 minute 0 and if you say set to what that will do is it will update the information that WeatherGen is keeping track of such that it now considers this weather to be for that time and if we were to go back in time until we got back to whatever it was before 1 hour and 15 and 30 or something like that, we would see that it's actually weather from before this. So the other thing you can do is, um, you know, say you've gone forward a bunch and you're like, oh, I'm all the way up to day three, I want to go back and see what it looked like at the beginning of day two, you can say zero, and instead of clicking jump to, click, uh, sorry, instead of clicking set to, click jump to, and that will actually move the weather to that point in time, so it brought us all the way back to uh, the beginning of uh, day two. Um, so you have a little control over time and you can kind of move your way around in the weather uh, universe until you find something you like and then align it with whatever your notion of time is. Um, I think one, uh, two more things to mention. The first one is that once you get things working the way you like, I highly recommend you click Save Settings. That will again bring up a save dialog. You can save a settings file. Uh, when you do that, it will save pretty much everything you see here. And so you can tweak and tweak and tweak until you get something you like, and then uh, maybe save a bunch of F maps, and then save the settings, and then you'll always be able to come back, load those settings in, and get back to where you were having preserved all of your settings. So that, that can be kind of handy. I actually recommend you do that if you spent a bunch of time customizing. Go ahead and save your settings so that you can get back to where you want. Maybe you would uh, generate a bunch of weather for your campaign for day one, and then you know now you play through day one, and now you come back and you're going to generate a bunch more weather for day two. Well, you really want to pick up where you left off, so you would have saved the settings when you were done generating for day one, and then later come back, load them up, and pick up from there. So that's one feature I want to mention. The other one I want to mention is this thing called wind stability regions. Now, if you look in the inter interface here, if I make this bigger again, um, you might see this uh, this sort of dashed box here. And one of the things you'll notice is that the wind is very um, uniform in that area, unlike the surrounding areas. Um, and you'll also notice that as we kind of move the weather through, that um, it's it's not the the weather in there is never changing. So this is a feature I call wind stability regions. And so the idea here is that um, you might need to have the winds be very predictable or, or static in a certain area of your um, uh, world. And the two reasons for that uh, that I can think of, three reasons really, are uh, one is for tanker operations. If you're doing air-to-air -air refueling, um, the tanker already behaves weirdly enough without us making it worse, and changing winds uh, can play havoc with the tanker. So you might want to define a tanker area and say, well, the wind in here is always you know, seven knots uh, out of the west. Um, you also might want to define an area for carrier operations uh, for our friends who are flying the Hornet. Um, they might want to be able to take off and land at the carrier. And it can be helpful to say, well, the wind is you know, coming more or less along the line of the, of the, of the deck of the cat. And so uh, we want to be able to shoot into the wind and recover into the wind. So you can define an area and say, well, it's always going to be, you know, say, 30 knots or whatever the appropriate value is um, at a heading that corresponds with the uh, carrier heading. Um, a third reason is that you might want to stabilize the winds, say, at an airbase, so that you can uh, set up a, a situation where you know the winds are going to be a crosswind 
uh, Atlantic. I mean, you could change the weather until you found that situation, or you could just define a wind stability region that says the winds in this region are always stable. So the way that you make these um, is you uh, you get one by default when you start the app. Uh, you can get rid of it, so we can go ahead and click remove and you'll see it disappears. Um, but we can also add a new one. When you add a new one, it starts out up here. Uh, right now, the way that you control the position of this is by typing in uh, where you want the northwest corner to go. And so I might say like 20, 25, and so that'll move it down here. And then I say I want it to be, um, you know, four squares wide by, you know, 10 squares long. And then inside there, I'd say, well, the wind is going to be, I don't know, make it stronger, 15 knots. Uh, coming out of the east, so that's heading 90. Uh, one thing to realize with uh, winds is that uh, the heading number for the wind indicates the direction from which the wind is coming. So uh, here we see, for instance, prevailing wind, which kind of influences the overall wind direction in the in the weather. Uh, at the moment, it's 325, which means it's out of the northwest. It is blowing from the northwest towards the southeast. But we could change that to say, well, it's out of the south. And now you can see that the prevailing winds um, shifts to be from the south, although it, it does have variation elsewhere. Um, so if that's how you define a wind stability area, um, you can have more than one. So if I click again, I'll get another one, and that can have entirely different settings. So I'll just leave that one the way it is just to show you. And you know, you can, if you can do that, maybe this one's for your carrier ops, and this one's for your tanker, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so. I think that's really it. I think that's a basic introduction. Again, really, I think the easiest way to use this is to just fire it up. You know, go to the URL kendera.github.io slash weathergen. Uh, click in here, change the seed to say, you know, 25. Uh, I don't like that one. I like this one, 26. Find a good one that you like. Uh, come down here, say save current, a single F map, and you're good to go. You can then use that F map in your, um, in your campaign or TE as you see fit using the uh, FMAP support in Falcon. Um, I will be posting uh, additional updates to this uh, program as well as uh, I have a bunch of ideas for how I can make it better, um, uh, as well as maybe an additional video for some of the more advanced features, although again, you do have the help in here. You can click here and uh, clicking again will get rid of it. Um, uh, but uh, for now, I think that's good good enough to get started with. Again, if you have any questions, do please go to the BMS forum, the thread for this, and that'll be linked uh, right up here in the title bar. Um, so, hope you find it useful. Um, I have been having a lot of fun creating this, and we have been using it at the first a little bit, and it's been pretty successful, but I'm definitely interested in your feedback as to how we can uh, make this better. So, thanks.